So the C Cardinal tank actually lied to me the other day. And before we get into talking about what actually happened with that after I got the nitrogen cycle started, let's talk about what actually happens during the nitrogen cycle in a saltwater aquarium. Here we go. Now, I've spoke on the nitrogen cycle a lot in my channel, but it's usually been a bit of a brief overview. And in this one, we're going to dig a little bit deeper so that we can really understand what's going on, on in a biochemical way inside our tanks so that we can get a grasp on why this takes a certain amount of time when we set up a new tank. Now, it's an important note for me to make that when we set up an aquarium, just letting that aquarium run for a few days does not constitute a cycle. That's not what cycling means. That's just a tank that's running. There has to be an ammonia source for this process to kick off and take place. Now, after that ammonia source has been added to the aquarium, and there's lots of different ways that we can do that, and we've talked about those in other videos. But after it's been added, the resulting process thereafter by which the fish waste is then broken down in ammonia and eventually becomes nitrites and then nitrates and even nitrogen gas, which is something that a lot of people don't often talk about, that is the true nitrogen cycle. And this is essential to being able to have a functioning, running, biologically functional aquarium. Without this process, your tank is basically going to turn into a toxic soup where really nothing is going to enjoy life, if it even survives at all. Now, there are three main parts to this nitrogen cycle, ammonification, nitrification, and then also denitrification. Now, the first two are what people usually are talking about when they discuss the nitrogen cycle. The third part, denitrification, is actually sort of the end result of this process. It's still a part of the cycle, and the tank is going to eventually get there on its own. Some advanced aquarists are able to use equipment and stuff to set up the denitrification process right from the beginning if their intent is to load the aquarium with a heavy bio load right from the start. But this is not something that a beginning aquarist is going to have to worry about because it naturally happens over time. In the deep areas of the sand bed, deep within the middle of the live rocks, this process is going to take place and we're going to cover it in depth in just a minute. Now, as I mentioned, ammonification is the first step in the nitrogen cycle. This is the part of the cycle where ammonia is introduced to the aquarium. And it is how all of the fish waste and the leftover fish food and the decaying matter in the aquarium actually becomes ammonia. And for our purposes here, we really don't have to understand a whole lot about how that stuff breaks down. We just need to know that it does indeed break down. But when you're kicking off your nitrogen cycle, much like I showed you in the last video on this Sea Cardinal build update, we have the ability now to control that process and how much of that ammonia is entered into the aquarium directly right when we set it up by using ammonium chloride from a bottle. Back 20 years ago, we did all kinds of other things to introduce this ammonia to the aquarium. Everything from putting dead shrimp into the tank and letting them break down over time, all the way up to peeing in the tank. Yes, that was a real thing. Ask anybody who's been in the hobby for about 20 years and they will tell you that used to be done. Thank goodness we don't actually have to do that anymore, right? Now, once that is in the aquarium, then the real magic begins, the nitrification part of this process. And there are two bacteria that are responsible for the two phases of this process, nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. But they do things a little bit differently from one another. Nitrosomonas is the bacteria that is responsible for converting the ammonia into the nitrites, and nitrobacter is the bacteria that converts the nitrites into nitrates. And there's a whole other set of guys that do that denitrification process. But all of these guys are chemoautotrophs, which means that they create their own energy within themselves and they do it through chemical reactions. Humans are heterotrophs. We have to consume food and then we break that food down and we use it for energy and we produce waste. These guys do the same thing, but it's through chemical means within their own bodies. They are also aerobic bacteria, which means that to do this process, they need a certain amount of oxygen to make it happen. And it's not just oxygen so that they can respire and breathe and have that oxygen available to them. As I'm going to explain in just a few minutes, they actually use that oxygen and they combine it with the other molecules that are found in, a, in the aquarium, the ammonia, 
and they use that in the conversion over to nitrites and nitrates. And the anaerobic bacteria responsible for that denitrification part of the process, they use that oxygen in a completely different way. With both of these types of bacteria, nitrosomonas and nitrobacter, these chemical reactions that they do within their own bodies, they use some of the electrons from that process through their electron transport chain to create ATP. Now, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It is the fuel that all living cells use for energy. That's a generally simplified definition, but that's basically what happens. They create these chemical reactions. They use up the oxygen found in the water in the aquarium to do that reaction with and the resulting extra electrons. That's all food, baby. Now, nitrosomonas, the way that they do this is they take that oxygen and they combine it with the NH3 or the NH4, the ammonia that's found within the aquarium, and that creates a temporary secondary compound. And then they use some enzymes to rip that compound apart and one of the resulting products from that ripping apart or that enzyme activity is nitrites. The problem that we run into with our tanks is we usually end up with a situation where more ammonia is being imported into the tank at the beginning than there are bacterial population to use that ammonia up and convert it into those nitrites. These nitrosomonas bacteria have to grow in population and that takes time anywhere from 24 to about 36 hours, generally speaking, because we're not in laboratory environments, for these guys to double in population. That sounds like a lot, but when you're talking about extremely small little microscopic microbes, it takes a lot of that doubling to generate enough of a population to control all of the ammonia that's introduced to the aquarium at all of the time. This is why nitrogen cycling in aquarium takes a couple of weeks usually. These guys actually run on ammonia. They are fueled by this ammonia, just like humans are fueled by food. So what happens if there is an absence of that ammonia? They go dormant for a little while, and then after a couple of months, they actually begin to die off. But this is what allows us to have bacteria in a bottle. These things are grown in a lab in basically perfect conditions, then they're introduced into a solution and that is put into a bottle and put on the shelves for us to get and do a fishless nitrogen cycle in our aquariums. But after a couple of months, these guys begin to die off. So that starts to degrade a little bit. So always check the date on the bottles of beneficial bacteria that you're getting to see if there's a use by date or a manufactured date and make sure you're within that two month time frame. Now, nitrobacter bacteria actually does a very similar thing as nitrosomonas in that it takes an additional oxygen or more oxygen from the water in the tank and it combines that with the nitrites that are available and you end up with nitrates. If you look at the actual chemical names of these things, that's why they are NO2 and NO3 because nitrates has one more oxygen molecule attached to it than nitrites does. But through the processes of actually adding that extra oxygen onto that nitrite molecule, more electrons are removed from the molecule itself and those go through that same electron transport chain creating ATP and thus energy allowing these bacteria to live their life, do their thing, split and double in population size every 36 to 60 hours. It takes a lot longer for these guys to do this process because the resulting energy from this process is net less than the resulting energy from the conversion of ammonia to nitrites. So there's not as much energy there for them to do their thing with. And it just takes a while. Think of it like this. And you guys know I love a good analogy. So if you are the first person at the door when an all-you-can-eat buffet opens on a Saturday morning, the buffet is stacked. Everything is fresh. Everything is hot. It's ready to go. You can go in there. You can fill your plate. There's no absence of anything on that buffet. But after all day long, after all of the people have come into the buffet, they've gotten what they wanted to eat and all that, you come in right before closing time, there's probably not enough food left for you to get a full plate or to do everything that you need to do, get yourself full before you go home. This is kind of the same situation. Once it reaches this point, 
there's just not enough electrons left in these chemical reactions for that nitrobacter bacteria to be able to really replenish and double and triple in its size as fast as the previous guys. Now, one thing you will notice is that there was no light included in any of this stuff. These guys are totally non-photosynthetic. They do not need light to go through this process, which is why anybody who's been doing this for any amount of time will tell you to leave your lights off during the nitrogen cycle. Now, I have mine on just for the video, but after this, I'm turning them suckers back off because having the lights on during your nitrogen cycle is just going to cause you additional problems. It's going to make the diatoms show up. The ugly phase is going to happen sooner than it should in the life of the aquarium. And then those guys are going to be in competition with everything else that's going on in the tank. So just leave your lights off till the cycle's done and then turn them on. Now that other step that I was telling you about earlier, the denitrification step, that is the final sort of phase. And it takes that those nitrates and turns them into nitrogen gas. And as I mentioned earlier, this is always going to happen. And this is part of the maturing of a tank that people talk about. And this takes a long time. These bacteria are anaerobic, meaning they live in a low oxygen zone, but they need oxygen to do the thing that they need to do and convert that into nitrogen gas. So where do they get the oxygen from? Really at that level in the tank's life, the only place that they can get the oxygen from are from the nitrates that are found. Remember the conversion of ammonia into nitrites and then nitrates added oxygen to each one of these molecules. Well, the nitrates have tons of oxygen. So these guys actually start to break the nitrates down. They remove some of the oxygen from it, converting them back first into nitrites. And then they convert it into nitric oxide by removing another oxygen. And then finally, they convert it into nitrous oxide, which, yes, is the exact same stuff that they use at the dentist office to make you feel a little loopy. And they put in high performance engines to make them go really fast. And just for a fun little scientific fact, nitrous oxide is also one of the greenhouse gases. And the final step in this process, these bacteria take two of these nitrogen atoms and they cram them together, which is nitrogen gas, and it escapes through your tank, through the water, and out into the atmosphere. This is the only natural way to remove nitrates from the aquarium. If you don't have this process happening in your aquarium over time, if there's too much ammonia introduced at the beginning, or if you cram a tank too full of animals too fast that the bacteria cannot keep up and these low oxygen anaerobes don't proliferate into the aquarium, you end up in, with a situation where the nitrates are just going to keep rising, 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 rising over time, and they're never going to reach a point of stability. This is why all the experienced Aquarists always say nothing happens fast in a reef tank. You have to take this slow or you have to have the expertise and the knowledge to be able to offset it using something like a denitrification reactor, something like a sulfate reactor or a carbon reactor that's installed on the aquarium. You inject that with a carbon source and there's media inside where these anaerobic bacteria can grow, they convert the nitrates into nitrogen gas and whoop, out they go. But that's more of an advanced thing. I don't want any of you who are just getting started to think that's a piece of equipment that you need on your aquarium. It's absolutely not. This is completely optional and you should really only do that if you're digging in and really doing the research on how that stuff works. It is very, very easy to overuse something like that and strip all of the nitrates out of the aquarium. And that's not a situation that you want. We need nitrates. We need to keep them in reasonable ranges. Anywhere from 2 to about 15 ppm is what I prefer for my tank with a target of 10. But you need them in there and you don't want to make them all go away way too fast. So why is all this stuff important anyway? Why am I even telling you this? Because something just happened to my aquarium. When I got the sea cardinal started a couple of weeks ago, in the last video, I introduced ammonia to the aquarium. I shot it up to one ppm and after five days, I tested the tank and as this image shows, it appeared as though my tank was cycled and I even got really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing cycled in five days. 
Unfortunately, that was not the total truth. The next day after I took those measurements, I went ahead and redosed the tank again up to 1 ppm. But this time, it didn't clear. It's still in there. There's still a little bit of ammonia hanging around. And unlike the first image, now I have nitrites showing up. So I was very excited at, at first, and I thought that maybe the tank had already gone through a very light nitrogen cycle, which obviously it was doing some things. The Petco Imagitarium um, biological booster that I used was obviously good and started doing the job, but it was just a little bit too fast. And right now, today, there's still 0.25 ppm ammonia and some nitrites and about five nitrates. But that means that it's actually doing the thing. So hopefully in the next video on the Sea Cardinal, we're going to be talking about the ugly phase. But we're just going to have to wait and see if it actually gets there. And this is super important because any ammonia within your water is toxic to the animals that you put in there. Fishless nitrogen cycles are my favorite way to go because it completely eliminates any opportunity to harm any animals with the ammonia that is found in the tank during the nitrogen cycle process. Just for example, if I were to put some fish into this tank at this point right now, there's already ammonia in there. That ammonia is immediately going to start burning those fish's gills. And other products that are out there on the market, like Seachem Prime, they, they say that they detoxify ammonia, but there is some research that has been done that shows that it really doesn't do everything that it, they claim that it does. And it's only viable for about 36 hours. So you have to keep adding this stuff every single day to keep the fish safe. If it gets a little too high, you got to do a water change. You got to keep looking at them. You have to keep worrying about it or... You could just do a fishless nitrogen cycle and not worry about any of that. Now, one thing that's often misconstrued in saltwater aquariums as well is that nitrites are toxic, just like they are in freshwater aquaria. And this is just not the case. The actual toxicity mechanism is inhibited in saltwater itself because it just doesn't work. It doesn't affect the fish in exactly the same way that it does in a freshwater aquarium. So, once the ammonia in this tank drops back to zero again, I'm going to go ahead and move a couple of chromies from the big tank that is currently in teardown, and I'm going to put them over here so that that natural ammonia source is in there and it keeps these populations of bacteria going. You have to think of the nitrogen cycle in our aquariums as nature's biological filter. And it's not something that just happens and then the tank is safe and it stops. This is an always going cyclical process as the ammonia and fish waste and fish food that's uneaten becomes ammonia. The bacteria have to continue doing this job for the entire life of the aquarium. This is going to take place. And if your water parameters get way too far out of whack, your pH too high or too low, your temperature too high or too low, if oxygenation in your aquarium becomes a problem and there's a lack of it after you've added all of these fish and things, this can all cause a situation where those microscopic bacteria responsible for this magical thing that happens in our tank, they start to die off and then you end up with a tank crash. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, be sure to drop hashtag to the end in the comments right before you watch that video right there. It's going to be super interesting. And if you don't watch that, I can't make money. And if I can't make money, I can't keep doing this. So do that so I can do this and help me help you help me help you.